In this video trailer, we're gonna look at what is a liquidity vacuum. Stay tuned. Hey guys, a very warm welcome to you. All right, so what is a liquidity vacuum? So liquidity vacuum is something that I've observed on the tape when I watch the level two or the market depth or the price ladder or whatever you want to call it. And it is this. When you have a scenario on the market and the understand a classic scenario is a breakout and it could be to the upside, it could be to the downside. This rough example I've put on here will hopefully kind of give you some uh, kind of insight to what this is all about. So you have a scenario here where whatever market it is, let's call it ABC market, ABC is sitting there trading, chugging up, and 52 happens to be a very significant key level. Breakout level, maybe it's a prior high, maybe it's a 52 week high, whatever. The more significant, the more likely there is to be this liquidity vacuum. And we see it quite a lot on things like, that are a, bit, a little bit thinner as well, like DAX, like crude oil, um, less so the S&P 500, apart from when it's really going crazy because the border book's much thicker. But stuff like DAX, where you've got single digits on each of these levels, then in the order book, then you're going to often see this liquidity vacuum effect, especially to the downside. That DAX likes to have a little shove through the downside and shudder a few people out. But anyway, back to the example, going up, hitting that 52 level. Okay, this is what the order book looks like when we get to this 52 level. So we've got on this side, we've got the bid, and I have done a kind of comprehensive guide to level two and to market depth, if you wanna check that out if you're not familiar with this. But we've got bid on this side, we've got ask on this side, and let's just replace that as well on here so we know what's going on. And here, normally you would have uh, volume on here as well. So these are the prices. We've got people stacked up here at 51. We've got people, and officially 52 would probably be there because actually because they're crossing, it wouldn't be a, it would be a trade taking place. But you get the point. Uh, and you know that's, that would be 52, 53, 54. But you get the idea. The point is now is that we've got quite a layered book. And if you can imagine, maybe you've got you know 100 contracts here. Maybe you've got 50 here. Maybe you've got 20 here. Maybe you've got 80 or 70 here. Uh, you know, maybe you've got, I don't know, 10 here, maybe you've got 50 here, uh, 15, maybe you've got, um, you know, five, and then maybe here you've got 200, for example, okay? Now, what happens is, as we break out of that 52 level, then all of a sudden, a lot of stops are triggered, right? A lot of buy stops are triggered. A lot of orders come into the market that say, hey, 52 is broken, buy when that's broken. And so we have a flurry of people saying, I want to buy at whatever price you can above 52. And then we go bang and we come up and here we are now trading at 57, okay? The price has gone all the way through and all the orders have taken away the 52, the 53, the 54, the 55, the 56, and maybe they've nibbled a little bit of the 57. So maybe now that 57 is down to 100, okay? So someone has come and bought all those, whatever the sum of that is, plus 150. Now, what often happens is the liquidity vacuum is that those orders have gone, we've seen that taken place, the stops have been executed, and now we're in an interesting position. It's not for long, it's for a few seconds, and we often see this, which is very useful for intraday traders. If you're a scalper, this is super useful. We often see this. The, the order book now looks like this. You've got 56 bid 57 because someone has come in and bid 56. And maybe there you've got 10 contracts, okay? But what we've got now is we've got a massive gap between 56 and 52. And these are the guys who were stacked up before. So there's 100, there's 50, there's 20, there's 70. Because they've not done anything. They've just been sitting there and now they're there. But we've got this in situation where someone's come in and bid that and maybe we've got one at 52. We've got this vacuum where now, as before, it would have taken us 100, 150, uh, 170 to break through down to 48. Now to go from 51 to 48, which is what, three ticks? Now to go from 56 to 51, say taking 11 contracts, that's a liquidity vacuum. And this could even be one contract. We could not even have the 56 printed in there. What does that mean? It means if someone comes in and sells 
12 contracts at the market they're getting 56 52 and 1 at 51 the price now is suddenly shooting back to 51 and we start seeing that on the chart we see it printing up 57 we start to see it coming back at 51 so that's the liquidity vacuum because when we brush through when we go through a level we don't people don't have time to fill in the orders as it goes up and that leaves that little like a no man's land if you like which could be easily gobbled away. So when you're trading this, what's the use of this in trading? Well, if you're trading uh, scalping, is why you wanna be feeding it into these stops. So when you see these stops triggered, you wanna be selling into them. So you wanna be using kind of orders that are you know, one better than the limit, one better than the limit, whatever it may be, or just selling. I mean, this is, you know, I've simplified this. Often this sometimes just goes for a while and you see this kind of chug and you still see it very thin. Maybe there's a second wave coming through. So you're okay to kind of hit the market because there's always gonna be someone there, especially if you're not trading too much size. The limit's obviously better for this kind of thing. You're putting limits in to capture that spike. But what it also does mean is what happens afterwards. Because if it sits there, and this is why you see the difference on a chart between that and let's say this because if people are coming in and filling that book quickly as it approaches here the chances of the breakout continuing are quite high right if people aren't coming in and filling that and there's no real buying intention above that 52 level then we only going to take 12 contracts or whatever it is to bring it back to 51 we start to see those wicks on the candles on whatever time frame we're trading exactly like that because we're getting prints up there but there's no real volume done there's no real intention no one really steps up you don't see algos kind of going best bid and filling this order book so it's as thick as that but just in those prices which would indicate that they're prepared to pay up again prepared to pay up again and that's when you see breakouts continue so yes it's a bit granular for some people who aren't that interested in looking at the level two on the tape but i wanted to, to mention this in this video because even if you don't kind of want to get involved in that when you see this kind of thing these breakouts holding all these breakouts faking and you see it happen very quickly knowing what's going on under the hood so to speak might make you change the way you trade it you might say well actually you know i don't want to be chasing breakouts getting in on a buy stop because i'm going to end up paying up at 57 when in reality I could either wait for a bit and see if it holds and still pay 57 but got a little bit more info or I could start to bid below back to where it was maybe halfway and get a bit of a better price without paying up with the rest of the retail guys. Something to think about guys, what is a liquidity vacuum? Very, very useful uh, for day traders. If you like this kind of stuff, thumbs up is appreciated as is your subscription and support. Take care whatever you're doing uh, and keep the risk managed guys. Goodbye.